put aside what everybody else says and look to what your goal is and figure out how to get there. You won't be able to do what a nine to five person does. You won't be able to do even what somebody who was born with it, with the money in their pocket does. You have to be able to do what it takes for you to get there, map it out. Hi, I'm Adrian M. White, and with over a decade of entrepreneurship experience and launching four successful businesses, I know what it takes to grow your business online and live a more purpose-filled life doing the work that you most enjoy. Branding Invert is your go-to resource for branding, marketing, and entrepreneurship advice for service-based business owners looking to scale their business to six figures a year. This is the Brand and Convert with Adrian M. White podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Brand and Convert with Adrian M. White podcast. I'm so excited today. We have another entrepreneur spotlight. Today, I will be highlighting Carl J. Gray III. Carl is an award-winning business solution architect. He specializes in helping entrepreneurs to start, grow, launch, and scale their businesses by architecting custom business solutions. Carl has a wealth of experience in business, IT, and process development. He has been involved in businesses ranging in size from startups to multi-million dollar companies. In addition to his work in the private sector, Carl has also developed strategic plans for federal agencies and consulted for some of the largest cities in the nation. Carl is also the author of the Seven Day Business Plan. He serves as chairman of the board for the Canadian Foundation of the Arts, as well as on a number of other nonprofit boards and has launched a summer camp program teaching teens cybersecurity and entrepreneurship. Welcome to the stage, Carl. How's it going? It's going good. Busy as always. But hey, that's a good problem to have, right? Yes. Entrepreneur never sleeps. (laughs) Never. Oh my goodness, never. (laughs) Yeah. So me and Carl actually go pretty far back, I'll say, for our adult lives. Because we met um, while we were at Hampton University for college. So Carl Mm -hmm. was in a program, a student leadership program, and he was a big brother to many. Um, And (laughs) I think I met him in that regard of being a big brother. Mm -hmm. And then later on in life, now we're all in the DC area. So run into each other pretty frequently. Right. (laughs) Not even just in DC, right? (laughs) DC and beyond. DC and and beyond. beyond. (laughs) Hey, you're in full conference? So am I. I know. I remember running into you in Las Vegas. Where else did we run into each other? I can't remember. Like it was crazy. somewhere else. I'm like, it was, I, can't, I don't remember the exact place. He's like, oh, wow. So I guess I'm in the right place to be there, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I feel like it, it was maybe the islands or something. I feel like it was yeah. far. Because the Vegas right. one was like, whoa. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, but I guess it was, it was meant to be because we have some similarities in our businesses and business concepts. So let's dive right in, Carl. Tell us about what do you do? <laughs> so currently, I'm a uh, business solutions architect where I help business to build out their ideas, you know, like, like an architect does, you know, someone comes with a vision and we really draw out the processes to make it a success. I've been in this industry for a a long time. And I finally decided to really do it on my own, which is how I created launch with Carl, where I help to launch businesses. So that's what I'm doing now. I tell people I'm a serial entrepreneur instead of just launching my own businesses over and over again. I felt that it would be better for me to grow the entrepreneurial community and help others to grow there. So that's where I'm focused now. What's your journey to entrepreneurship? Did you, were you an entrepreneur like right out of getting out of college or did you get into some other things first? So I was an entrepreneur when I was a kid, okay? I was one of the ones that was selling everything. I hear and that I, a lot. I hear that a lot from us, the entrepreneur network is like in our blood. But. <laughs> Right. Like I always had ideas. And again, I tell people, you know, I don't have great ideas. I make great ideas happen. So I think my first time doing the first business I had was it was an art business. Right. But I can't draw. (laughs) But one of my boys is an excellent artist. And so he would draw. I would go and make copies at my mother's job. 
of his pictures and I would sell them, we split the profits and go buy candy from the from the gas station. Um, that was really how it started. And then I was one of the ones who would, you know, sell stuff out of my backpack in school and all of that. But I actually really had a love for politics. Uh, and so I actually Same. went to school for as a political science major because I wanted to be a, a, a political strategist, which, you know, helped me to get into the marketing piece. So I ran a number of campaigns here in Prince George's County, you know, got to work under some uh, really uh, genius minds um, in both parties, uh, which actually helped me to learn how to connect with people. You know, you know, I, I do everything campaign based. I'm like, hey, let's get to this point and then we move on to something else. That was kind of my journey there. Politics got too dirty, so I became an ethical hacker. People like, wait, how does <laughs> exactly how does how does, how does hacking how does hacking clean in politics? Just to let you know. And so I I went from there, and you know, after a while, I, you know, I decided to pick up photography, and just because I wanted to, you know, do pictures, I was taking pictures at my church, and you know, but then people started asking me to do it. So I said, hey, look, I'll turn this into a business. And so, you know, I created a methodology on how to launch that business. And it's the one I use all the time, even to this day. And so then when it was time for me to leave my firm that I was working for, I wanted to go on my own. Uh, but I also, you know, you know, whenever you go on your own, you have to start getting customers and clients. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I use the same methodology I use to build my photography business, to build my IT consulting business. Then when COVID came around 10 years later, COVID comes around and I was on a really big contract that was making me great money and I got, you know, pencils down. I was like, oh, chill out. So I said, all right, so what am I going to do to make money now? Went back to the exact same methodology that I <laughs> that I present to people now. And I launched an ethical hacking course where I started teaching people how to become ethical hackers. Like, wait, I know how to do this. I can teach you how to do it. What so, is an ethical hacker? <laughs> Essentially, an ethical hacker is someone who goes into companies and we test their systems to ensure that they're safe. So I can do the same things that the bad guys do, but I'll actually, you know, I tell you what I did so that you don't get caught. You know what I'm saying? I keep my mask on me all the time. So people kind of, you know, know that yeah, it's real. When you got a mask, it's real. That's what I'm going to tell you. I taught that. So companies hire me to this day, actually, after this meeting, I have to go to, to a client where I go in, I do what the hackers would do. And what I do is I say, this is what they would do. So fix this, fix this, fix this. So it lessens your chance of getting hacked. So mm -hmm. then, you know, I was like, okay, my dream has always been, I want to be a venture capitalist, right? But I knew in order to get there, I need to start helping build businesses, help people build their own businesses. And so, um, because that's really a passion of mine. And so I started developing all of these different methodologies that I've been, you know, going to trainings over the years. My past since I was a child, had me in entrepreneurial classes, you know, on trainings, going around the country, learning stuff. And so just taking all of those things, you know, this wealth of knowledge and beginning to package it in a way that is easy. Because what I've learned is so many of, you know, my people, you know, I mean, I look real black, can't you tell, are not very aware of a lot of these methodologies that are out there. They don't know about sales phones. They don't know about branding, marketing. They just get them and they like ask their friends to sell it. But you know, no one wants to be in the friend zone. That's the worst place to be, right? So, you know, my methodology that I help to keep them out of the friend zone and they have, so that's kind of been my journey. So today I do launch with Carl full time, helping businesses to grow, start launch, been pretty lucrative, you know, <laughs> been able to upgrade everything in life. So, yeah. That's awesome. Launch with Carl, are you teaching people the methodology that you use to launch your businesses? Yes, I actually teach. It's called Four Days to Launch. That's my initial, um, that's our flagship program. If you have an idea, over the course of four days, you can launch a business. Now, whether you do it four days in a row, you do two days this week, two days next week, or one day a week or a month, something like that. But I tell people, whatever you do, make sure it's consistent and you spend the time to, 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 to get it done. But, you know, there's four days where you can actually launch a full scale business. No problem. What are some of the outcomes that people are getting using your process to launch versus just launching it themselves? <laughs> right. Oh, great. Because, you know, what what I've learned is most people come to me after they fail to launch. You know, mm -hmm. they started, you know, it's like I say, there's a difference between starting and launching. Starting is just, hey, press play, but launching is propelling yourself. What I love about that is there's an easy way to see the differences. You know, like I had one person, she's a forgiveness coach. And initially, you know, she was doing it and she was selling, I mean, six week programs for $500. I mean, stuff like that, just to get people in the door. And I said, no, you don't, you don't have to do that. 
you know, if people want to get with you, they they will in their page. So she went through my program and now she's being not only is she making, you know, six times that on her on her programs, but also she's being uh, flown out different places. You know, her speaking has uh, has taken off. She actually uh, has a book out now. You know, and she and somebody just hired her for a radio show. Those type of things. Wow. Because you know, what I tell people is, when you launch properly and people see the boom, they're gonna pay attention. But if you just right. kind of trickle out there, no one pays attention to the drip. You know, they pay attention to the waterfall. So we want to do is help help people get that waterfall. You know, another one of my clients, she's a clothing designer because this works on for for I do uh, whether it be brick and mortar or you know online, whatever it is, because business is business as long as you do it correctly. And so, you know, she in, being in a service based business, just working out of her home with whoever came, helped to put things in place for her using the exact same methodology where people who knew her and knew that she did it, but didn't take it seriously. Now she's their primary person and she's, a, she's able to work full time now doing this. She's able to quit her job so she could do this. So just, just those nice. type of stories. Nice. How did you come up with the methodology? God himself gave it to me. Like I said, I wanted to get into, I wanted to start making money doing photography. And so all of the things that I learned over the years, mind you, this was in 2012 when I first did this. But I you know, again, been going to training since I was 14, you know, how to find the target market, you know, how to word things, doing different types of, of offers, you know, creating those, that client testimonial base, all of that. I said, okay, let me do this and let's see how long it takes me to do it. And that's how that's how I knew it worked in four days because I did it in four days, and um, it could probably be done in less time. But uh, because if it took me that long, I you know kind of narrowing it down. But I do know that my my target market they're busy, and so you know just doing taking two hours a day over the course of four days to get it out there because that's how long it took me. So I really just sat down and said, okay, what do I need to do to get from here to money? I did the money is where I go. So. Mm -hmm. Is the four days the amount of time it takes them to create, you know, create and prepare for the launch, or is that how long the launch is? That's how long it takes to prepare for it. So okay. yeah, you press play. You press play on day four after you've built everything out and you know done a little bit of soft launch and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. you know, on day four, well, I'll just take them up the process. Not the deal, you know. I get. I, I, I have okay, give us, give us some tips. Give us some strategies. So <laughs> first thing you do, you have to have that minimum viable product i tell people not come to try to launch something if you're not good it's not what this is for <laughs> you know you know keep staying that trial phase one of the biggest things is knowing your numbers to make sure that it's going to be profitable when you do because i say do not launch in the red it's dangerous to launch in the red because then you are very apt to not want to do do it again but you make the price low enough where somebody can't say no high enough where you make money but it's still low enough where you never that price ever again and so from there you, you know, you identify your really, really warm market. The people who have who've paid attention to you, they're, they may be friends, they may be family, and you give them this price because most of them wouldn't pay full price anyway. You know how friends and family are. They were like, hey, they try to get the hookup. So you're essentially offering them the hookup up front in exchange for them. They have to do a testimonial. They have to give you feedback and a certain period of time that they have to use it within. Otherwise, they don't even get that, get that discount. Mm -hmm. And so from there, you, you announce that it's coming so that you know how many people will be interested. You're saying, hey, so look, I plan on, you know, doing this program. Uh, it's for this type of person. It's going to do this. Do you want to get involved in it? Or if you're doing a closed launch, they have four different launch methodologies. But if you're doing a closed launch, you select everybody that you're using. So for instance, when I did my photography business, I only got people who look good on camera. I didn't want everybody in front of my camera. I was very, I mean, <laughs> because you're part of our marketing. But I yeah. also told them in it that that's why I picked them. I said, you're photogenic. I think you'd be look good on my portfolio. So I'm giving you the discount because it works out for both of us. And, you know, yeah. a little bit of flattery goes a long way. Yeah. So you do that. You and I'm sure, I'm sure like photographers, especially like in L.A. and stuff, they've been doing that for years where they're picking <laughs> attractive people on the street. And so most of the time they do it for free. <laughs> I was like, but I'm not doing it for free. I'm like, I don't believe in free work. So they were in a long time ago. So once you do that, of course, you deliver and make everything automated in a way that once you deliver to them, they can they can give you everything that you wanted. 
send them how to do the reviews. I create the hashtags for them, you know, that they can do that. You know, all of those things, ask them for their feedback because feedback is very, very important. And one of the reasons we never do a free launch is because you want to know how good your marketing is as well. You can't test marketing, giving away something. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, you like true marketing. Of course, you can test reach, you can test interest, but you can't test marketing because that's actually getting that money out of somebody's pocket. So, you know, yeah. you do that, you press play and you over deliver. I say all the time, every, every client I have, I over deliver. I spoil them too. Sometimes I got to stop that. But do over deliver. That's awesome. It kind of made me think in regards to the testimonial thing. So a lot of service-based business owners have issues with having testimonials, getting testimonials, sharing the testimonials. It's like they almost don't know kind of how to start and like, should they be written? Should it be in video format? Is there a certain platform to use to like make it easier for their clients to give them? Do you have any strategies or suggestions, you know, surrounding getting more testimonials? I always ask for video, always ask for video because video can be converted into anything. You know, I can type out, I can, you know, transcribe a video. I can take the audio out of it. So I always ask for video. I'm looking, I, I've seen some solutions that people use to do it, but I just ask you to drop it in my, in a Google drive folder because most of my clients have to that. Take with it with your phone. Mind. Right. Just do it with your phone because I like it to be organic. I don't want it to be too fancy. I did have, you know, one recently because I helped a, a really major podcast person and he filmed it in the studio, of course. And that's because, you know, he wanted to advertise his stuff as well, which is fine with me. But most of the time I say, just drop it on your phone. Tell, And I want them to know that they matter to me more than my product. So, I mean, more than their testimonial. So what I have to do is tell them to announce themselves first, tell people about what they do, then talk about me. And mm -hmm. what I learned is when you tell, when you allow people to put themselves first, then they'll really do what you want. Is there anything specifically you say to them to try and like incentivize them to give the testimonial? Please. <laughs> no, honestly, what I do is I, I kind of put the onus on them to think about if it's worth it. This has been helpful for you. One thing that you say, what I need you to do is a testimonial. So when I put the onus on them, so it's not forced, it's not a bribe. They, most of the time, my customers do recognize, my clients do recognize that I've done more for them than they even expected. And so mm -hmm. for me to say I need them when all this time they've needed me, it empowers them to want to do it. I don't try to trick. I don't try to bribe. I, I want to make it as easy as possible. They, most times they're like, can I get my hair down? Like, if you want to, but you don't have to. But, you know, when you're getting your hair done. <laughs> I will ask that. I'm like, well, you don't have to wait for that. Just go ahead and do it now. And I'll uh I'll do a, a tent in it so you know. You know <laughs> You're like, I'll photoshop your hair for you. Don't worry. Yeah, about yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's hilarious. So that, that's where your photography skills come into play, too. Okay, you know, <laughs> gotta work. Jack of all trades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me about a time that you dealt with like a difficult client and how did you, you know, manage that? It can be in any of your businesses that you fire them. Oh, um, no, I fire clients. You said fire them? I fire clients. I do. I let them know we can't move, move forward anymore. And most of the time, when they aren't doing the work and they most of the time they recognize it you know they recognize that they're not doing what they agreed to do because there's always an agreement in the onboarding process to say hey if you, you know, if we're working together this is what expect of you you have to provide this you need to review these things you have to do x y and z when we talk we have deliverables that go back and forth so i can't allow them to, to use me in my time because it's a waste but that you know there was one who they kept doing scope creep and they were adamant on these things. Like, I pay you to work for me. I'm like, first of all, I don't work for you. I'm a consultant. And I was hired to help you to get a specific result. If you want to go beyond that, we can amend the contract later. But we need to get mm -hmm. these points first before we can do that. They were very adamant about, you know, that they were the ones in charge. And I said, oh, okay, well, don't pay me anymore. You're out. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So they basically were they were like out of scope. They were asking you to do things that were out of the scope of the contract. Yeah. And it wasn't even so much the out of scope piece. It was the attitude behind it as if they were entitled to it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's tough. I've had my a handful 
the difficult, the more difficult ones. Yeah. And at first, it was like I, you know, I was so early into full time entrepreneurship. I just wanted to please the client, and I'm like, you know, customer service. This is my reputation. But then exactly. they start pushing you around and like talking to you like out the side of their neck and stuff, and. That's yeah. not how this works. That's not how this works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really like what you said about scope because once you once you're able to really scope out the project really well, which you probably already know how to do because you're selling the same, you know, mm -hmm. service and then you have it in legal writing and they've agreed to it, it's very easy to like refer back to the contract. Like that yep. that was not included in it, but I could charge you extra. Like right. <laughs> Yeah, yep. that's cool. What are your suggestions in regards to like pricing products and services? Because we'll talk specifically about services. So a lot of, you know, new entrepreneurs, they launch their business and they're out there, but they're still working a full-time job. So they're not necessarily relying on that income that they're getting for selling their services. And they're like, oh, I don't want to charge too much. I don't want it to be, you know, I want people mm -hmm. to buy my services, but then it kind of sets them up later. So what's your outlook on that? And do you have any strategies on how they can price their services a little bit better? So I, I like to do service basis on results, not effort. If I can guarantee certain results, if I know I can get, you, you know, most of the time I've learned that people, they underprice because they're not confident in what they're doing. And so, you know, sometimes they have to do it at the lower this is one of the reasons why i do my launch program is so they can get that part out the way quickly I'll get that part out the way at, at the beginning but all that's to say we have a uh when you price it look at what the result is going to be for your client like mm -hmm. i tell you know all of my clients you will make more money off of this than i would you know <laughs> then you pay me that's a part of the plan here so if my pricing is six thousand eight thousand ten thousand dollars you can pretty much guarantee you, you know, at least two X that if not more. So that that's how I look at it. I'm sure you're enjoying this episode, but I wanted to quickly pop in to let you know about how you can grow your service-based business to six figures a year today by learning how to better market it online. Join my exclusive membership community, Marketing Maintenance, for as little as $49 a month and learn how to develop and implement effective online marketing strategies that bring in more leads while also keeping your WordPress website protected and up to date. This program includes website updates, site maintenance, monthly marketing trainings, one-on-one -on -one marketing strategy meetings, and marketing deliverable creation. Join today at marketingandmaintenance.com. So that that's how I look at it. I don't try to do effort based, like how much is you know costing me or costing my, you know, my time or my staff's time. It's really about what is it that you're going to get out of it and how much is it worth to you because i, I look at the, um, the the luxury brands now a hermes bag obviously is done well whatever they do with it they probably do it excellently they probably have the best people to do all of the sewing but i can guarantee that all of that together plus the materials and marketing is not equal up to no fifty thousand dollars <laughs> But the result that someone gets from walking around with it is worth that because it puts mm -hmm. them in a certain class where they can operate a certain way. The same with luxury cars. Now, you know, these Bugattis and all those things that are show pieces, they are not, you know, typically from an effort, from a time and material standpoint, worth that much. But the esteem that it gives somebody, we can walk into a room and walk out with $2 million contract. A fifty thousand dollar car, a hundred thousand dollar car, a two hundred thousand dollar car is worth that, and so that's how I look at it. It's what are you getting out of it? What is it worth to you? And what I've also learned—I don't want to get too deep into this, but because I know you know this very well—is that the more you charge people, the better results they get. Literally, you can be doing the exact same thing for you. And I tried this myself. I did an A/B test, doing the exact same thing for two different people, similar personalities, charge one, one price, charge one this uh, uh, for the same project, bounds more. Like, I mean, I'm talking about at least 10 times more and watch who gets the better result. 
It has nothing to do with them, nothing to do with their tolerance, their personality. It all has to do with the value that they placed on what you did. That's yeah, how the you investment. Did. Yeah, I've totally seen that. So like my clients that have paid more or, you know, paid for my full service, mm -hmm. they are invested, you know, they are pleased with the final result. They, you know, they're really invested in the process and it moves yep. forward and it completes. But the people, when I first started full time, I had like a discount website program and this and that. And some of those people that came through that discount program four years later still have not launched their sites because they were never able to follow through on what they needed to provide to me for me to be able to launch, you know, right. their exactly. website. So it's like four years later, come on, like what is going on? I started apologizing to clients for undercharging them. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I, under, I said, I'm sorry, I'm charged. You know, <laughs> I said it on my first, because uh, I do a mastermind program too. On my first cohort of that, I said, I said, I want to apologize to everybody. I undercharged you, so you might not get the results that you want. Now, if you want to pay more to get better results, please do. But I'm encouraging you to act like you paid $1,000 for this, because that's uh -huh. what it works for you. And even in that, because I had different tier pricing based upon when they bought, the people who paid the most, the same, I mean, they're all in a group. It's a group session. Yeah. The ones who paid the most are getting the best results. The ones who did yeah. the discount when they barely show up. <laughs> yeah. But you can you can kind of understand like the psychology of that yeah. though. Because uh -huh. if, if you pay in like 250, 500 or something, something that's like there's no pain, like when you right. when you, you know, mm -hmm. swipe that card or whatever, like yeah. you kind of you don't have a pain if it didn't work out either. But when, you know, when you were paying more and that was something from your savings or you are on that payment plan, you never paid that much in your life for, you know, investing in yourself, they would be more disappointed in themselves if they did not complete it. So they're feeling sure. the investment. Mm -hmm. So yeah, PSA to the people out there. So people know 2023, my price is going up. Because <laughs> right. I, I, want, I, I want you to succeed. Yes. <laughs> so, everybody, but, everybody's price should go up in 2023, you know? Like, well, and that's another yeah. thing, you know, I tell you all the time, do not let the recession and inflation just drop your prices. Mm -hmm. Hello, no one does that. Prices go up in inflation. If your prices go down, that means that you don't think that your product is a necessity. And I think it is. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions for people that want to raise their prices, but they're like kind of scared to sell it? you know, at those higher pricing? Do it. There's really no, get out your own head and do it. When you walk to the grocery store and you see the price of milk is going up, do you still buy it? Yes, because you need it. So the the biggest thing is positioning yourself in need. And you, you know, again, just part marketing, branding, position yourself as needed, not wanted, not desired, not good to have, but a necessity. And when you position yourself as a necessity in front of the people who need it, then they're going to buy it. You know, I don't drink uh, milk, so I don't care what the price of milk is. I'm not going to buy it. It could be two cents. I'm not going to buy it. It could be $17. I'm not going to buy it. But give me some, you know, some nice almond eggnog. I don't look at the price. I get it because it's there. I don't know if it's going up from last year. It's right. the price of price because I want it and I buy it. That's how you position yourself. When you position yourself in front of the right people, the price does not matter. Yeah, for sure. Have you done any mindset work or do you recommend like any mindset work to be more confident in your business and selling and stuff? So I don't do mindset work. I've never done it myself. And I tell people I'm not normal. I'm very much not normal. This is something that's been inside of me for a long time. So my mind did not have to be changed in order to do this. Now, my mm -hmm. sister, she's an excellent mindset coach. Like she developed methodologies over the years that I, I've sat in somewhere trained like, oh, shoot, I actually need this. You know, so, and if you can get me to like, I would never do some of these other big guru people. Every time I see them, I'm not. Nah. But, you know, I've seen, you know, my sister do it and she knocks it out the park. I'm helping people with with really changing their minds and understanding themselves um, in this. I do recommend doing it. And um, I have noticed that a number of my clients actually, because, you know, as a community, 
we need a mindset change when it comes to entrepreneurship. You know, people think sell is a four letter word, you know, when it's not. It's, it's actually, you know, what we're supposed to do is actually just helping someone to get to a solution. Um, but I think that one of the biggest things that we have to do is learn is deconstruct so many things that have been told to us by the media, by television, you know, all of that type of stuff that it's OK to really make money. You're not taking it like there's no such thing as filthy rich. There's no such thing as an obscene profit. You know, there's nothing obscene about profit. What people do with it afterwards, but the but the the act of making the money, it's all you because people will never pay, never ever ever pay more for something that's worth to them. Never, it's impossible. Great advice. Okay, so we're coming down on the home stretch. Do you have any final words of advice for you know the listeners that are out there on just something that they should be doing to really grow their business or you know kind of get more serious and get better results? Be different. The entrepreneurial lifestyle is a different lifestyle. We cannot be normal. There are things we can do that normal people do, but for the most part, we have to think differently and nobody will understand it if they're not in those shoes. You know, I, I tell people all the time, I'm a musician. I'm a drummer, very, I'm, a, I'm an accomplished drummer and I don't listen to music. All day I'm listening to podcasts and audio books because I'm feeding my mind. Sleep is not the priority for me as it is for other people. Like, I mean, I'm on vacation, but like every day I don't, I don't sleep much, you know, that type of stuff. So, you know, one of the things that I think is important is that we recognize the absence of normalcy in our lives. Because one thing that people don't understand is that if you're going to try to be normal, you're going to get normal. Put aside what everybody else says and look to what your goal is and figure out how to get there. It, you won't be able to do what a nine to five person does. You won't be able to do even what, you know, somebody who was born with it, with the money in their pocket does. You have mm -hmm. to be able to do what it takes for you to get there, map it out. That's one of the things we do. I got like our, my company prototype consulting group has a whole uh, entrepreneurial roadmap where, you know, at each step, what you need to be doing, where you want to go. And so as you, you know, as you grow, you can help to you know, alleviate you, you more sleep because you have things automated, you know, things like that. I'm not saying always be in that state of, you know, everything on you, but initially starting off, you have to, it's called sacrifice. Yeah. And that really made me think of um, like time management. And we, when you were saying the 90, nine to five part, how do you feel like someone who's still working their nine to five, how should they manage their schedule when also trying to grow their business? something's going to lose eventually. It's hard to say, uh, especially if you're trying to grow. Now, if it's just a side business, that's cool. But if you're trying to grow it, your nine to five is going to have to start suffering somewhere or your family life is going to start suffering or your personal life is going to start suffering. Something's going to suffer for this to grow, but make sure that you get a deadline. Like, look, I got to get here to make this happen so that I'm no longer doing the nine to five. I'm no longer sacrificing family life. I'm no longer sacrificing my personal health or whatever it may be. And because you don't ever want to stay in that place because you'll kill a person. What you want to do is, like you said, that time management piece. Like one of the things that I do is the things that I want to get off my plate the most is what I do latest at night. So once those things become off my plate, I can go to sleep. Wait, I'm mm -hmm. not doing this. I'm adding and I sleep in my day. You know, mm -hmm. um, the things that I, you know, enjoy doing with those things that are in my zone of excellence. That's what I do for, personally from nine to five. Well, you know, they're like 10 30, but you know, <laughs> what I would consider nine to five. Um, so if you're one who is working that, have that exit plan, have that number that you want to reach to, uh, to, and, and, and when you walk away and my, the trick to that is don't wait till you reach that number, get to 75% and roll out. Mm, yeah. I like that. Time, because that time that you've redeemed, it'll jump. In my personal journey with like working nine to five and then going to full-time entrepreneurship, I was at a fraction of, you know, how much I wanted to make when I made the jump, but it came to the point where the, my side hustle, it was really impacting my nine to five. Like I was getting a lot of emails throughout the day. I was starting to get like a lot of calls. I had a lot of clients that wanted to meet with me or prospects during the day. And it literally like was really, it started becoming 
challenging <laughs> to mm -hmm. manage both. Um, right. And that, exactly. was, that was the year before I went full time. That's when you know, when, you know, you're taking you're using your PTO to see clients, you know, when it's like, oh, you're trying to, you know, double dip. That's when it's OK. It's time to roll because you're good enough now. I tell people, don't try to match your salary before you leave. That's not a smart thing because it's nearly, that's very, very hard to do number one, but it's not Right, because you're working part-time hours for your side. Right. <laughs> Once you get to about 50 to 60%, you can start, you can start putting a notice and, you know, start using that time and really begin to focus. You'll start, you'll see, and the day you quit, of course, have that plan. Like I have a plan, you know, how you're going to get more clients, how you're going to do more marketing you know, um, lead generation and things like that. But, you know, at 50, you will probably turn it over and you're done. Um, I think also that ideal number that you want to make to be able to go full time doesn't necessarily have to be your dream income. It just mm. needs to be how much do you need to live to you right. know, sustain livelihood. And then you can continue to scale from there. But, exactly. you know, some people are like, I will make 200,000 a year. It's like, okay, well, you know. You're not gonna make that when you first make your jump, most likely. But <laughs> right, like, you should not do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's what that's where a lot of people are in that. But you know, especially in this area, you know, where we do some, you know, some pretty decent salaries, for lack of a better term. Yeah. You know, they they're making their you know, eighty nine hundred k, um, but they want to you know have their own business, and they think they get their business to eighty nine or hundred k. No, what I say is, you know, do the numbers based on the hours work, you know, the same way you do it, you know, for your job where they pay you an hourly raise, even your salary, they do it by hour. They just multiply mm -hmm. the number, by two, they divide the number by two, that becomes your hourly raise. Mm -hmm. And so look at that and see how much based upon the time you're putting into your business, how much are you making per hour? And it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, then it probably will begin to make sense. Again, once you reach that 60, 70 percent of that number. And you drop the job, but then say, okay, I'm not stopping working. I'm stopping this job. So those eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours, because you're traveling, comes your, your money money. Awesome. I love it. And it's great advice. Yeah. So Carl, how can people get in touch with you if they're interested in connecting with you, learning more? Call me, beat me if you want to reach me. Kim Possible. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, silly. But they can, go to, uh, they can find me on Thing at launch with Carl. I'm around launchwithcarl.com. If you ever want to set up a time to talk about growing and scaling your business, you can go to discovery.launchwithcarl.com. You go seven day business plan.com. That book launched on Cyber Monday. Um, so go ahead through right now. I'm doing a deal where if you order it, the paperback, you'll get the uh, ebook for free as well as a workbook. So I'm like, look, because my main goal is to help people with not really trying to get rich off of it. This is, you know, people to be able to see how this works and you know hopefully work with me later but yeah um seven day business plan.com i'm doing a retreat in las vegas in april which is you can go to las vegas business retreat.com and if you're really serious nice. about entrepreneurship yes you got we're renting a luxury mansion have a private chef usher tickets included all of that for, Wait, what um, is this what, what? <laughs> <laughs> Where can we get more details? <laughs> Me? Where can I go? <laughs> See? Yeah. VegasBusinessTrip.com. You can go in and get more information about that. A very good price to have for it um, as well. Because, again, we just want it to be a time where people who are serious about their business can come in, look, see, and really, you know, take advantage of it away, have some fun, but also getting 10x in your business. You know, we're going to be teaching some really crucial things that are necessary to grow and scale. And also... I'll see Usher. You make me wanna. I'm trying to see Usher, and I'm trying to <laughs> see see. Business in Las Vegas. <laughs> it's all about selling. Yes, I, I love it. That's, a whole, that's a whole nother thing. When you're an entrepreneur, you know you can write off these trip <laughs> vacations. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, look, if I if, if I got a bribe you with Usher tickets to make you successful, I would do it. We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Carl. This was awesome. I appreciate you and congrats on your book coming out. Everybody cop his book. Hope to have you, you know, back on the podcast soon. Most definitely. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem. Have a good one. All right. You too. Thanks for tuning in. You made it to the end. We have more amazing episodes coming up just like this one on the Brand and Convert with Adrian and White podcast. 
Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at brandwithamw and learn more about working with me at brandwithamw.com. People always ask me how I scaled my business to six figures per year and now work full-time in my purpose. After a decade of being an entrepreneur and launching four successful businesses, I know what it takes to get your service-based business to six figures per year quickly. Start booking higher paying clients, automating your processes, and clarifying your messaging in my free training, five strategies my clients are using to develop brands, websites, and processes that grow six-figure businesses. Secure your seat today at training.brandwithamw.com. See you there.